This is easily the best chapter before the year end, bar none. Year is close to ending, and Sorochi went out of his way to end it with an insane chapter that got me floored with excitement and fear. The series may be ending next year, but it's no time to tone down the thrills and chills of the finale. It didn't undermine the tension between Usuro and Yorozuya at all. Is intense as it should be. This is one emotional and exhilarating chapter with an end that can tear your heart out. What a way to end the year! Sorochi is always best at incorporating with action and emotions, and thankfully, he does it again with this chapter. Properly so. The first page sets up the theme of the chapter Sadaharu and his family. The first flashback scene already grasped my emotions with the charming display of Yorozuya as a whole. The family is purely unbreakable. Every time I see them, I think, yes, that is a true family right there. You know too well how attached they are. I feel that Dog Lover will feel even more emotional because of how close to home it portrays. The calm before showdown scene is mind numbing. You can already sense the deep tension in the first shot of the present time. It's the final battle vibe that goes through the veins. The hype is through the roof. The real tension is there is a time limit, and that is Sadaharu's time span. He can only hold the Atana for so long, so if the dragon veins were to resume active, then his life has vanished. In other series, they would have toned down the intensity, leaving the root openly predictable. This series said otherwise. The chills I get from the setup got me excited for Yorozuya working together. It adds more thrills when Usuro taunts them for when Sadaharu dies. All the blame goes to them, not him. After all, he's not the one that requested to stop the veins. I don't even know how to talk back at that, but. But damn did it get them extremely pissed. Once they all clash, it's when the chapter just becomes masterful. The transition between the flashback and the action is excellent. Usually I will be bothered with the distraction and cuttings that could have been saved elsewhere. However, it is essential to use this mixture to add more emotional weight and greater focus on the characters. It's no rocket science that these characters are wonderful, so any addition to the mix will only have us attach even stronger. The flashback materials are mixed with charming, pleasant, and heartwarming. Each member has their own portrayal of Sadaharu's bonding. Shinpachi's scene is short and sweet. He returned home and Sadaharu waited for him by the door. Shinpachi reacted like he is talking to an actual family member. It shows true friendship between a boy and a dog. Shinpachi fights through and begs for Sadaharu to wait and live until they win the war. It's amazing to see how much of a badass he has gotten. Kagura's scene is sad and pleasant. My favorite one out of the three. The part where she was walking down the rainy road reminds her of home. Is pretty touching. The connection actually hit me when she felt the pain of loneliness and depressing time. The connection actually hit me when she felt the pain of loneliness and depressing times. My favorite is how Sadaharu went home hastily while leaving Kagura no choice but to chase after him. Once she was at home, her depressing tone vanished and realized that she has someone at home. Never feel alone again. It's clear that these two has among the strongest bonds, so it's no wonder the delivery is sweet. The consideration of their feelings always hit home for me as an owner of my dog. Man's best friend is not a lie. Kagura fights through and knows that he's always home for them. Seriously, I don't want to see her broken if Sadaharu were to die. As for Gintoki's scenes, it's a great changeup from the two as it presented more in a comedy light, which is pretty fitting. Gintoki got all drunk and got Sadaharu some sort of souvenir 
the less said the better. It's funny how Sadahara was annoyed and slammed Gintoki, only to actually help him to clear his mind. It's funny yet charming to know that even at the dumbfounded moment, Sadaharu still cares for his family and always stays by the door for them to return home. All scenes are a great display of bonds. The driving force of Yorozuya ending the fight for Sadaharu is heartwarming. The flashback not only serves the importance to each of the individual, but it also serves how they are all connected. He's their guard dog that will always wait for them, and this is no exception. It's a swell comparison as well as great lead from the beginning of Sadaharu's story in this arc. It's only a matter of how Sorochi will end it. The intensity of the action is top notch. The whole tension is backed up by the time limit of Sadaharu's lifespan, Usuro's vulnerability, and the finale of the series. When they clash, it's exhilarating as hell. Everyone got their part in the battle. I was on the edge of my seat when they are close to kill Usuro and feeling more worried about the time limit. Even after a small cooldown, they resume again with another clash and the intensity is higher than before. It's a picture perfect display of all or nothing moment. The teamwork from Yorozuya is astounding. Whenever they have a small room to attack, they take it. Whenever Usuro is distracted by one simple object, such as an umbrella, they come out of nowhere and strike hard. That hit on Usuro's head was so damn brutal. It's simply riveting. The visual presentation is seriously good. Of course, it has wonderful set of action set piece that absorbs your attention completely. One of my favorite moments is actually that cool down time is one page of all of them getting back up after taking a hit, including Usuro. I got goosebumps just by looking at them rising and raw cry for a kill. It's so blood pumping. The only downside is there is a page that is in a rough draft stage. I don't think Sorochi is sick or anything. I'm more surprised that he managed to squeeze in so much detail and not suffer anything until now. He will be fine, I'm sure of it. The ending is emotionally painful to watch. What a douche, Sorochi. What a douche. When everything seems to be at the end for Usuro, the Atana suddenly rise up and the Dragon Veins is back inactive. That could mean one major note. Sadaharu has died. The Year of Dog is coming really soon. Do you have any shame, Shorochi? Do you? All I can think is that I'm sealed in a glass case of emotion. Seriously, please tell me that he's still alive but unable to control the Atana. It's possible, but the way how the chapter ended leaves a bone chilling feeling. It has mission fail written all over Gintoki's face. This is how we end the year. World coming to an end. Wonderful. This chapter was outstanding from start to finish. Sorochi did a great job on capitalizing Yorozuya as a family that no one is left behind. Next year can come soon enough. It may be ending, but 2018 will be an epic year for Gintama. Share your thoughts in the comment section. This is the last chapter of the year. And next year, we're pretty much guaranteed to see the end of Gintama. I don't like that fact, but it has to be end somewhere. But hey, at least we got the anime to watch over the arc. Once again, all in animated glory. Voices and the soundtrack. I cannot wait for the anime version, I cannot wait to see the ending, despite the fact I don't want to see the ending, I just want to see end it in a very glorious fashion. There's a lot of great things that will happen next year for Gintama, even after it ends. 2018 may be the end for a lot of series, when the time comes, we will always remember how amazing this series was, and it always forever will be. And that will do it for the review, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you like this and want more of this, subscribe to my channel and my world will be yours to stay. Until next time, take care.